violinist Jean Lamont has spent more than three decades as music director of Toffel Music Baroque Orchestra. Critics around the world have praised the Toronto Ensemble's innovative performances and Lamont's leadership. Lamont talks with Christy Black about her retirement from full-time work and her plan to serve as Toffel Music's part-time artistic advisor. The violinist also discusses why she'll be on stage when Toffel Music performs the Galileo Project, Music of the Spheres, at Penn State Schwab Auditorium. What would you say, at least at this point, has been your favorite experience? Well, I think one of my favorite experiences, there are so many, in 33 years it's hard to say to choose one, but one of them definitely has been um, the performing of the Galileo Project, which we're taking to Penn State, which we have toured more than any other program in our history. It's taken us literally around the world. We've, we've performed it in, in Kuala Lumpur and in... Um, you know, all over Asia, and ch China, and Japan, and and um, Australia, and New Zealand, and all over North America. So it's pretty pretty exciting. We have done it so much, and we love doing it so much. It's the first program we ever learned entirely by heart. Wow! Um, as an orchestra, the entire entire orchestra plays by heart, and it's multimedia. You know, there's there's beautiful images. And anyway, so that's my favorite thing, is to tour that. Um, your projects are very visual. Yeah. How, how would how would you describe that visually to an audience who has yet to see your performance? For sure, I would say that it's a concert, but it is equally um, a visual treat, and the images are of ast or as astronomical images, for example, from the Hubble spacecraft, or images from Galileo's books that he wrote on astronomy, and it's so interesting because they're so accurate. Um, so, you know, those are also mm -hmm. up um, in the um, show. And uh, so it's just all very visually rich um, and musically wonderful music. And um, there's an actor who sort of ties it all together. The actor is uh, moves amongst the musicians and, and the images and just basically makes the whole thing hold together in a very beautiful way. And it's just a beautiful experience from all aspects. Well, and, and you touched on this a little bit, but there's almost a choreography uh, with the musicians um, and, and a lot of movement on stage, or at least for different numbers. I, I think that's really unique to Tafel music. It is unique, and it only works because we know everything by heart. If we didn't know everything by heart, we'd be, married, we'd be stuck in front of our music stand, staring straight ahead at our music stands and not making eye contact at all with the audience. But because we know it by heart, we can move around on the stage. We even move around in the audience. Sometimes we go out into the audience and perform from there, and it gives the, a sort of a very real surround sound kind of impression. We can also do, there's a little bit of acting that the musicians do um, on the stage. And all of that is possible, and a certain amount of choreography, only because we um, we're free. We're free of the music. It's a very unusual experience. I mean, people do see, like, if you go to a symphony orchestra concert, you'll, you know, the solo piano or violin player will be playing without music, but the whole orchestra will be with music. Mm -hmm. So, And nobody's moving around. So this is a very, very unusual thing for an entire orchestra to memorize a whole program and, and perform it that way. So it's and it's really fun. At first I thought, oh, you've got to be crazy, when Alison <laughs> Mackay, who is the creator of the program, said, we've got to do this by heart or it won't be the same. <laughs> and I said, you're insane. You can't ask that orchestra players to memorize that. And then <laughs> she convinced me, and now I think it's the most wonderful thing that ever happened to top music. I know as a violinist, and a beautiful violinist, by the way, um, you also perform with the orchestra. Will you continue to be on tour at times? I will be on this tour. I will be on some of the tours, like, for example, the Memorized Program tours, because we now have the House of Dreams Galileo, and we're developing a third one. So those programs, because I have memorized it, it's not so easy to just to replace somebody because mm -hmm. at the last minute, for example, because right. nobody knows it by heart, but the people who, the, you know, that specific core of musicians who learned it. Um, so I will be doing some touring. This year I'll be doing most of the touring because most of it is uh, related to those programs. And uh, so I'll be there at Penn State, and I'm very much looking forward to that. There is a, a worldwide search right now to fill your position, from what I yeah. understand. Um, yeah. But you talk a lot about how everyone is so in sync with each other. Is there anyone within Tafel Music who may be ready to step up and take over as music director? 
Well, that I don't know. I'm not a part of the search committee, and there is a very, very good search committee that does include some of the musicians, and I know they're looking at all possible options. So we'll just have to see what, what develops. I, I'm taking a step back. I think it's the way it should be. <laughs> Let them figure this out without my influence. <laughs> so I can't really answer that. What are your thoughts on how music performances have evolved for today's audiences? Well, I, you know, there still are many people who go to concerts and enjoy them. So I don't think that the concert experience is dead. And if they tend to be older people, that's probably because older people have more time and money um, and want to do less active things like, you know, run around and go skiing and running marathons and they'd rather sit and listen to music. So I don't think that's all a bad thing. But I think also programs, that's on the one hand. And on the other hand, I think it's important that we, the performers, the creators of the concert experience, experiment with new formats and new ways of performing concerts and new ways of having the audience participate rather than always be the passive listener. And I think the Galileo Project is a very, very good example of how it can cha we can change as performers the concert experience without compromising the quality of the music making. You don't just have to play pops concerts, which is what some symphony orchestras resort to when they want to fill the seats. They think, oh, the music's too difficult for people. We'll play pop tunes. We'll play Beatles tunes, you know, arranged mm -hmm. for the symphony orchestra. And that kind of, I don't believe that that is the solution. I believe dumbing it down is, is not the way to go. I think people just want to feel more of a part of it, and they and the multimedia is a great idea. Mm -hmm. And we we also at home do some, uh, we play in pubs, and we have for young people, like so we, we have these pub nights where people can drink beer and sit around at tables, and we play, but we don't play pops. We play mm -hmm. real music, and we play it as well as we can. And we talk about the music, and they love it. That's people a great idea. Love it. So, you know, there are ways of doing it that don't, as I say, dumb it down. And I'm just not a big fan of pops being the solution for these things. I just don't think that's the way to go. Because I think that the music is powerful and very, and the music that we're playing. And, and if you're playing great music, that's, that in and of itself is almost enough. But then you just need to figure out how to make it relevant without dumbing it down. So I think we're, we're the Galileo project is a. If anybody is really interested in alternative ways of presenting classical music to people, then they should come to this Galileo concert because it will blow their minds. Experience Tafel Music Baroque Orchestra's The Galileo Project, November fifth, twenty fourteen, at Penn State Schwab Auditorium. For tickets or information, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone one eight hundred arts tix.